So to start our investigations to really understand how carbon moves through an ecosystem, we are going to read a little bit about the Earth system. In the Earth system, scientists actually have noticed that carbon dioxide is increasing. This might be something that you've heard about because it's a very hot topic in the news. However, reading about carbon in the whole Earth system might help us figure out more about why the carbon seems to be decreasing in the biodome. We're going to read an article titled Carbon in the Global Ecosystem. If you have access to this article and want to read it by yourself, you can go ahead and get started. Remember to underline evidence that helps us understand our focus question in this unit, which is what is happening to the carbon in the air in the biodome? If you don't have access, no worries. You can listen to me read it out loud and annotate it together. Carbon in the global ecosystem. Many factories burn fossil fuels releasing carbon into the atmosphere. Okay, so I've heard a lot about fossil fuels um, in the news and how that is actually causing negative effects to our planet. So I wonder if it, it will tell us a little bit more about that in this article. Scientists around the world who study Earth's atmosphere have discovered something dramatic and alarming, an increase in the amount of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere. Okay, so let's highlight this for a moment um, and add a note. So increasing carbon dioxide is also alarming, right? So we have decreasing carbon dioxide is alarming in the bio. They are finding that the increase in carbon dioxide in our atmosphere may have worldwide effects on our climate and our oceans, which can threaten life all over the planet. Where is the carbon that makes up all that carbon dioxide coming from? Carbon is an element that makes up a lot of the matter on Earth. New carbon can't be created, so the extra carbon in our atmosphere had to come from somewhere it must have decreased in some part of the Earth system. Okay, so I'm gonna actually underline, I'm gonna um, not underline, I'm gonna highlight this in red and add a note that new carbon cannot be created. So does this mean carbon can also not be destroyed? But where? Humans put carbon into the atmosphere when we burn fuels like coal, oil, and gas that are found deep underground. These are called fossil fuels. Okay, I'm gonna highlight this word burn. Oh, it's not like burn. Burn. Um, because, and add a note, we saw in the digital model that the dead matter could release carbon dioxide when it burns. So is dead matter this gas oil? How does that work? Oops. These fossil fuels make the modern human lifestyle possible. Most of the time when we use a cell phone, drive a car, heat our homes or turn on the lights, we are using energy that comes from burning fossil fuels. We currently depend on these fuels to power our lives, but burning them releases large amounts of carbon dioxide into the air, and that increase in carbon dioxide might jeopardize life as we know it. Coal, oil, and gas are called fossil fuels for a reason. They are carbon-rich matter left behind by plants and animals that died millions of years ago. Okay, so the fossil fuels are the dead matter. So when we burned the dead matter, we were really burning fossil fuels. Interesting. 
These plants and animals were buried deep underground before they could decompose. So decomposers never broke down the dead matter. Okay, so let's highlight, this is really key. So when decomposers can't decompose the dead matter, the energy storage molecules get kind of trapped into the fossil fuel. Decomposers can't decompose that. Interesting. Over millions of years, the remains of the plants and animals turned into carbon-rich fossil fuels, coal, oil, and gas. The carbon that was in the plants and animals when they died is still there. It's just part of the fossil fuel. When we burn fossil fuels in cars, factories, or power plants, carbon that has been stored in the ground for millions of years is released into the air as carbon dioxide. So, just like cellular respiration, right, carbon dioxide is released. This time, it is a man-made event, right? We have to go and burn. Earth is a closed system. Earth is a closed ecosystem. There are many different regional ecosystems on Earth, but they all share one atmosphere and one ocean. Very little matter escapes from Earth into space, and almost none enters. Huh, so this actually, I'm going to highlight this. This is like the biodome. Both are closed systems. Since almost no carbon enters or leaves Earth's system, and carbon isn't being produced or used up, the amount of carbon in the system does not change. Okay, this is really key. I'm going to actually underline this part because this is evidence, evidence that carbon is not created or destroyed. This is similar to what we learned in our chemical reactions unit, uh, that during a chemical reaction, atoms could not be created. So the carbon must still be in the biodome somewhere. If carbon is increasing in one part of the Earth system, it must be decreasing somewhere else. Although carbon rarely leaves Earth's system, Carbon moves in a cycle within the Earth's ecosystem. This cycle is powered by energy. Carbon cycles from biotic matter to abiotic matter and back again. Oh right, we know that this, this is the cellular respiration and photosynthesis process. This means that carbon spends time in the air, in the ocean, in the soil, and in organisms as it moves continuously through the ecosystem. Powered by energy from sunlight, photosynthesis moves carbon from the air and the water into living things. Right, so that's moving it this way. At the same time, cellular respiration moves carbon from living things into the air, so that's moving it this way. And this continuous, consistent pattern of movement is called the carbon cycle, right? So it's kind of like a circle going round and round. Um, it continues to happen. However, human activities are altering the way carbon moves through the global ecosystem, right? So I see this red arrow showing the human activities um, that are also outputting uh, carbon into the air. As people around the world burn more and more fossil fuels, a great deal of carbon from deep underground is moving into the atmosphere. Carbon in one part of the system is increasing, right? So a lot of carbon dioxide in the air. And as a result, carbon in another part of the system is decreasing. In this case, biotic matter, which includes the dead matter. Since the entire Earth shares the same atmosphere, Changes in levels of carbon dioxide affect ecosystems all over the planet. All the extra carbon dioxide in the atmosphere 
is having many negative effects on the global ecosystem, and especially on the climate of our planet. Adding carbon dioxide to the atmosphere changes climate and weather patterns around the globe in ways that make it harder for many organisms to survive. Increased carbon dioxide causes global temperatures to rise, makes oceans water more acidic, and changes weather patterns. These changes may increase the chances of extreme weather events like hurricanes and droughts, which affect humans directly as well as the ecosystem and farms we depend on. By increasing the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, we are gambling with our very way of life. Wow, so there's been a huge increase in that carbon dioxide. So almost so much is happening that it's not able to be taken out of the air quick enough by photosynthesis. So that article, although it was about the global Earth, uh, we found out that they have some similarities to the biodome. Both are closed systems. And we found out in this article that in a closed system, the carbon cannot be created or destroyed. All of the carbon that's in that ecosystem is in there. And this actually reminded me of our chemical reactions unit, where we found out the law of conservation of mass, that these atoms in the chemical reactions were not being created or destroyed. They were just rearranging. And this is similar carbon in the ecosystem is just being moved and rearranged into carbon dioxide in the abiotic matter and energy storage molecules in the biotic matter. So this seems really helpful to us to let us know that we have to figure out where this carbon dioxide is going, where is this carbon being stored if we are seeing a decrease in carbon dioxide.